Welcome to the biofilter video. The goal of this video is to introduce you to biofilters and their use to treat airborne emissions from livestock operations. This video is one of several that provide useful science-based information about airborne emissions from animal feeding operations. The airborne emissions from animal feeding operations include odors, ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, volatile organic compounds, particulate matter, and biological aerosols. Over 300 different chemical compounds have been identified in the air from livestock facilities, most at extremely low concentrations. My name is Kevin Yanni. I'm a professor and extension engineer at the University of Minnesota. This video will introduce you to biofilters and their use to treat air from mechanically ventilated livestock facilities and manure storage units. So what are biofilters? Biofilters are an effective method for treating air to reduce odor and gas emissions. Biofilters are used to treat air from mechanically ventilated livestock facilities and industrial sources including wastewater treatment plants and food processing plants. We have years of research and practical experience using biofilters in the U.S. and they're used around the world. Biofilters are used to treat air coming through fans. This includes pit fans that remove air from manure storage pits and ventilation fans that remove air from rooms that house animals. Biofilters cannot treat air from naturally ventilated or curtain-sided barns unless the barns have manure storage pits with pit fans. How do biofilters work? Biofilters rely on microorganisms to break down the gases that come from animal facilities. These microorganisms grow in a moist biofilm on the biofilter media. The media commonly includes wood chips or shredded wood and compost, though other materials can be used. Gases treated by biofilters are absorbed by fungi or into a biofilm where microorganisms break down the gases and use the nutrients to grow more microorganisms, produce carbon dioxide, water, and some salts. What kind of biofilters are there? Biofilters come in different sizes and shapes. Flatbed biofilters are common. The media is roughly one foot deep so that typical agricultural fans can be used to blow the air through the media. Some people think that the area or footprint needed for flatbed biofilters is too large, so they are looking for an alternative. The large footprint can be reduced by building vertical biofilters. Vertical biofilters have sides and a top. The air flows horizontally through the sides or vertically through the top. Media settling in the sides can be a problem. Vertical biofilters aren't very common because they are more expensive to build. Research and development is continuing. Deep bed biofilters have deeper media, anywhere from 3 to 6 feet. Deep bed biofilters have a smaller footprint, but they require using centrifugal fans to blow the air through the media. Biofilters come in various sizes and shapes depending on numerous factors. The University of Minnesota has a biofilter design and management guide available on the web to help people design biofilters. How effective are biofilters? Well-designed and managed biofilters are very effective reducing odors. In the 90s, when we offered tours, we commonly had lunch next to this swine gestation and farrowing operation that used biofilters to treat 100% of the ventilation air. Numerous research studies have found that well-managed biofilters can reduce odors by up to 95%. Many studies have reported ammonia removal efficiencies ranging from 40 to 70% and hydrogen sulfide removal efficiencies ranging from 60 to 80%. Most biofilters treat pit fan exhaust and a portion of the ventilation air. Very few livestock operations treat 100% of the ventilation air because they don't need that much treatment to manage odor emissions. At the West Central Research and Outreach Center, they treat 100% of the ventilation air from the swine nursery because just beyond a row of evergreen trees is a beautiful garden. While biofilters are very effective, they do increase producer costs. Initial costs include the media, ducting, and other materials and labor to build the biofilter. In some cases, ventilating fans need to be replaced. 
Vertical and deep bed biofilters generally cost more to construct than flat bed biofilters. Biofilters rely on microorganisms to break down odorous gases. Biofilters are highly effective if the media moisture content is maintained at optimum levels to keep the biofilm moist and the microorganisms alive. Some biofilters are being managed without adding water, relying solely on precipitation. Time will determine whether their performance is satisfactory. Excess moisture can create anaerobic conditions in compacted biofilter media, where ammonia is converted to nitrous oxide, a greenhouse gas. It is believed that with proper media selection and moisture management that nitrous oxide generation can be managed. Galen Johnson, a swine producer in Minnesota, has used flatbed biofilters for several years. It functions well. Uh, I believe that they are effective. Uh, the, the research that I've read says that they're effective. Um, but there is labor and some costs to maintain and, and to operate a biofilter. And the, the benefit is uh, uh, neighbor relations and stuff like that, which there's value to that, just not always um, an economic value that you can put a finger on. Producers and managers often have questions about rodents tunneling in biofilter media, weed control, snow, and labor needs. So moisture is taken care of through a sprinkler system at nighttime, running only at nighttime. Rodent control, uh, we chose to keep the biofilter away from the, the, the actual cement against the building itself. So I have uh, approximately 12 to 8 inches, 12 to 18 inches of space between the biofilter and the building structure. And along that area, we will have um, rat bait um, boxes, rodent boxes, just like we would if we didn't have a biofilter spaced every so many feet along the, along the structure. And uh, that has taken care of uh, rodents. They have not been an issue. Weed control is something you need to stay on top of. I mean, weeds will grow on top of the biofilters and, and we will just control the weeds like we do um, around our buildings, which is just either be a broadleaf weed control or a roundup type weed control. And I'm not sure how many times a year, but I would say a minimum of three times a year we'd be spraying. Uh, spraying our biofilter for weed control. Riverview LLP is a dairy that has used deep bed biofilters year round for several years. We visited with Adam Zeltwanger to learn about Riverview's experience with deep bed biofilters. All of our day pits of all of our farms we put a biofilter to take the gas from the day pit and run it through the biofilter to reduce odor and it's very very effective. Uh, biofilters are expensive up front for us because we use uh, cement sidewalls, we use a uh, false floor in there with, with uh, and the fan forcing the gas in the bottom, forcing it through the media. So we do a, we do a, a lot of work up front. It's probably a $50,000 expense up front. And then running and managing that is relatively low cost from that point on. There's some disadvantages uh, the co and cost to running biofilters. Not as great as some would think. There's the electricity to run a fan all year round, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There's um, the maintenance and upkeep of, with the soaker hoses to keep the media somewhat wet. Um, as far as, you know, rodents in ours, we got it, they're contained in cement and some of them walls are like eight feet high. So, And then on the top, we put a shade cloth so that keeps it from blowing away or, or birds nesting or anything like that. So, And weeds, we don't really have an issue with weeds growing. It just doesn't. Some of them we have a roof over and with this bigger pine material, it it's not a, doesn't germinate a seed. Air emissions from livestock and poultry operations raise legitimate concerns among neighbors and the public. Producers, managers, elected officials, policymakers, community leaders, neighbors, and regulators need science-based information to make informed decisions, decisions that balance the needs of the community and neighbors 
and the businessmen and women who own and operate animal feeding operations. Biofilters are one technique for managing odor and gas emissions from mechanically ventilated animal facilities and manure storage units. Well-designed and managed biofilters are effective. For more information about biofilters and air emissions from animal feeding operations, you are encouraged to visit the Air Quality section of the Animal Manure Management Extension website. There you will find videos, fact sheets, and archived webinars.